You look at the data, well, 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. An article just came out, you know, just recently um, about the, the housing issues. You got the price of homes went up since the COVID war began 47%. 47%. Then you look at, at the, the numbers here, and this is according to uh, Redfin or Atom. A-T-T-O-M, examined 572 U.S. counties and determined that median price homes in about 80% of those areas are out of reach for the average in income earner. I mean, it's right there. Major home expenses on typical homes sold during the second quarter required an annual income of $90,598. So, so $91,000, and you're looking at the average income of uh, 71000 Again, and then you look at inflation. When I was a young guy, man, I mean, one of my first real jobs, I was making $31,000, and that was good money. And I said, no, the whole thing has gone down. And, you, and again, you want to look at the presidential reality show? How about all the inflation that these two clown boys created? With Trump, you know, the, what, what did the, the deficit went up like $4 trillion under him, like 3 or $4 trillion under Biden, dumping all this free money in to fight the COVID war? Stay in your house. Close down your business. Here's cheap money. Bring those interest rates down to zero. Can't understand why we got inflation. Can't figure it out. And it doesn't go away, the inflation numbers. It's going to be the crash of the dollar at some point. America's gone the way of the country that we fought against back in the revolution, uh, Great Britain. Sun never sets on the British Empire. We fight wars all over the world. Oh yeah, then you had World War I and you, the pound went dead because you kept fighting these wars. The same things happened to America. The trillions and trillions of dollars going to fight wars as the country's rotting in front of our eyes. I mean, you live in New York City. I went down to City two weeks ago. I used to live down in West Village. The West Village is one of the hottest spots around. Now I see guys like this all drugged out, watching guys shoot up. Everywhere where they were doing construction and they have this shaffling over there, scaffolding, all underneath it, all homeless people. Roads are rotted in front of us. How about the train system in America? Isn't it great? The New York subways are not in Calcutta. Amtrak is crap track when you go around the world and you see the high-speed rail. The country is rotting in front of everybody's eyes. And if you're too deaf to see it, all you had to do was turn on the presidential reality show and see the clown show that we had called a debate. These are the people running the country. They're, they're out of control morons and imbeciles that have destroyed what used to be the land of opportunity. Oh, how about... How about the, the vanguards and the black rocks and, and the state streets that own what? Uh, together, the largest shareholders of 40% of all U.S. companies and 88% of the S&P 500. That's according to uh, a study done that was reported in Business Insider. Once upon a time, this used to be the land of opportunity. Oh, you want to talk about the equity markets? The gang is running it in front of everybody's eyes. What land of opportunity? Again, we, we've been saying this for years. There's nothing new about it. The media is dead. Oh, talking about Great Britain? Look who's running CNN, the Cartoon News Network. Oh, they brought somebody over from the UK. Oh, who's running Bloomberg now? Oh, somebody from the UK. Who's running the Washington Post? Oh, somebody from the UK. Who's running the Daily Call? Oh, somebody from the UK. There's no media anymore. Again, that little slime ball, every time he got caught with his pants down, bombs away over Baghdad, Bill Clinton. Yeah, he did away with the Federal, Communic the Federal Communications Act, 1996. Six. Did away with all the restrictions, and now you got six companies controlling 92% of the media. There used to be thousands of independent radio stations, newspapers, TV stations. Now the big zone, everything. Again, they did away with the Robinson Patman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act, Glass Steagall Act, one after another. When I was a young guy, there were things called grocery stores, hardware stores, stationery stores, drug stores. Now they're all chains. You like Staples? No, I like Home Depot. Oh, give me that Walmart. They've destroyed this country. 
Again, you look at the new job numbers coming out. Look where they are. They're, oh, they're in the service sector, healthcare sector. They're not high paying jobs. So when you look at the reality and you get and you look at the numbers and you look at the equity markets, Main Street and Wall Street have nothing to do with each other. And there's going to be a crash coming. There's going to be a crash that nobody's talking about that we've been warning about. And that is, again, let's go back to the COVID war. Lock down all the businesses. People forced to work at home. People are working at home and they're saying, after week after week, month after month, year after after year, they're saying, I'm getting up at five o'clock in the morning to travel an hour and a half each way. Cost me all this money and I'm destroying my life. I'm not doing it anymore. And the guy that don't, or the people that have the tenants there, the, the guy renting the space say, I don't see him in these cubicles anyway. Yes, yeah, stay home. I don't need all this space. California, first month of lockdown, your office vacancy rate, empty buildings, 37% in San Francisco. You know what it was before the COVID war? 3.5%. Hmm. Nationally, you're looking at about 20% vacancy vacancy rate, vacant. Office occupancy rates, according to Castle Systems with a K, 51.4%. Occupancy. Okay. How about all the businesses that depended on commuted? Oh, they're going out of business. How about all the defaults that you're going to see as there are less tenants and these are interest rate only loans and your interest rates are double what they were when you bought the buildings and now you can't pay your loans. You're going to see a banking crisis, the likes of which we've never seen before. No one is reporting on it. They're going to do everything they can not to have a crisis before the election. That That's guaranteed. But whether or not they can do it is, is a guessing game. Even when you're looking at the official numbers coming from the, the feds, you're looking at about 22 banks that are, that are facing problems. Other data is showing up to almost 300. Again, barely being reported, and you're having one default after another, hardly being reported. And now let's go back when they dumped all this money into the when when Trump and Biden dumped all this dough into the uh, into the system to artificially prop up the economy when the COVID war, when they locked down everything, your interest rates are at zero. So now the banks own all these worthless treasuries. So they don't have the money to cover the defaults on the loans. There's going to be a crisis. And we're saying, again, you know, one of our top trends for 2024 was a golden year for gold. As we're speaking, gold is what, $2,360 an ounce. It's up over $300 an ounce since we made that forecast. Gold could very well hit $3,000 an ounce this year. But one of the headline stories was on CNN. The son of Asia's richest man is getting married in one of India's most lavish weddings of the year. What the hell are you telling me this crap for? What's going on in Ukraine? What's going on in Russia? What's going on in Lebanon? What's going on in Iran? What's going on in Israel? Did Taylor Swift, you know, this is the crap they're putting out. This is the, what the hell do I care? Some clown getting married in, in India. Why he's rich and you should know that. People don't have a clue. So going on, World War III's already begun. We'd forecast this. We forecast World War III. You go back to our Trends Journal magazine two days before the Russian invasion. From COVID war to Ukraine war to World War. And now what's going on with the Israel war? Ramping it up against Hezbollah in Lebanon. And what did Iran say? You attack Lebanon and you go after Hezbollah full force, we're going to wipe you out. Love it, hate it, agree, disagree with anybody you want. That's not what we do. We just put down the facts and give you the implications. There is going to be oil prices. You're already looking now at Brent crude. It's almost $86 a barrel. Oh, it just moved up what about another $5 a barrel. They go to war with Iran. You're going to see oil prices go to Belva. And, and oh, and they're going to keep launching more and more attacks against Russia because the United States and NATO gave them more weapons to uh, go deeper into that. They're going to be attacking oil fields, refineries, pipelines, etc. You're going to see oil prices could go up to $130 a barrel. And that's going to crash global economies in the equity markets. And again, the banking crisis is going to crash global equity markets in the economy. Again, the, and, and these are realities. These are in front of everybody's eyes to see. But again, we got to know, you know, who, who's, who's having with who and what, what are the rich people doing?
they're going to be lowering interest rates. I mean, the only reason the dollar is strong is because of the high interest rates. I mean, how could it be strong when you have, what, $35 trillion of debt? You, you got, what are you, we, we're growing a trillion dollars every hundred days? Oh, and you have these high interest rates, so you're paying more on your debt? So they're going to lower interest rates. The lower interest rates go, the deeper the dollar falls. The deeper the dollar falls, the higher gold prices go up. And this is important because other country, countries are lowering their interest rates. And it's one big club, as George Carlin, who was great, said, it's one big club and you ain't in it. The United States is going to lower their interest rates because they're not, they don't want to bring down the con these other countries uh, with, with the value of their currencies declining so rapidly because the dollar is strong. So the, the United States is going to get into the game and lower interest rates. They're going to do it. They, they, again, because you're looking at, look, at the, look what's going on in the, the underdeveloped nations. They're, 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 the emerging markets are submerging. You know, they're, they're going down really Really hard, and again, you look at what's going on in Japan with their with, with what's going on with the yen, with their low interest rates, and one after another. Oh, they're going to raise them to what? They've just raised them at a negative to, to almost nothing. You know, so again, they're going to be lowering them. The lower the dollar goes, the higher gold prices. This is just the beginning of the gold rush. But again, you got to watch what happens because, as I mentioned before. You look at the big companies that own so much of the markets that are in control of so much. So they're going to try to do everything they can to keep gold prices down. You look at all, you look at the data coming out from everywhere. You look at the, the, the PMI numbers, manufacturing numbers, they're soft all over. You look at the retail numbers, they're, they're down. You look at the job numbers, you know, they're coming in softer than expected. You're looking at the GDP numbers coming in softer than expected. The whole thing's going down. And it's only going to be a matter of time when the reality hits Wall Street. And it's going to hit. And again, we're, gonna, we're saying that, the, that what's going to bring it down is the office building bust. It's gone. It's gone. And the other thing too, very important, the buildings built in the last 50 years, according to the data, are non-convertible to housing. These are just big empty spaces. So, oh, and now they're saying they're going to turn them into warehouses. They're already overbuilt in the warehouse sector. So no, they're not. And that's going to bring down the banking system. Again, when you go back a little over a year ago, we had three banks that went under Signature, Silicon Valley, First Republic. It brought down the equity markets and gold prices spike. That was three banks, three. And now you have a minimum, according to the feds, of 22. The BRICs, they're doing everything they can to unite to get off the dollar. It's only going to be a matter of time. And again, we had that thing that came out about the, uh, whether it was true or not, about uh, Saudi Arabia taking the United States off the petrodollar. If that really became official, and because so many commodities are dollar-based, that's what keeps it up so high. So you go back to 1973 when they uh, put an embargo on oil when the Israel war broke out over there in 73. And you look what happened. It, it brought down the economy, inflation skyrocketed. So if they put an embargo on oil and or if they say, okay, no, more, no longer is oil dollar based, the petrodollar's gone, that, that will destroy the dollar overnight.